The Israel-Hamas conflict appears to be spiraling within the West Bank, but is the United States publicly admitting what everyone already suspected, that the strike on the hospital in Gaza was not the Israelis at all. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. This is your unbiased look at the last 24 hours in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Let's get into it. Okay, first, taking a look at the news update map. What I want you guys to take away from this uh, in the is, is kind of the aggregate. So you can see here is the West Bank, and you can see there is a significant number of events that have, have gone down in the last 24 hours. Uh, you can see, including some weird ones. Uh, I love when they say a young man was injured by army gunfire at a northern checkpoint. Uh, some of these euphemisms are madness. Listen, you don't get injured. Okay. You can get injured by army gunfire if you like wander onto a range on a military base. But if you are injured, like attempting to fight the military with a weapon yourself, then you're a combatant. Now I understand that sometimes there's, sometimes there's translation errors, right? Uh, if you translate something from a different language, you're going to, it can, stuff can be lost, but some of these euphemisms just absolutely kill me. Um, you can see according to the red crescent, uh, <laughs> three injuries two of which by live bullets and one by bullet fragments during confrontations in the town uh, of Matamar near Nablus uh, usually confrontations in this context refers to confrontations between civilians uh, J Jewish Israeli civilians and Palestinian Muslim civilians uh, but remember a lot of the individuals in what they call settlements here are armed uh, and and so the level of hostility looks again closer to something that we would probably consider like combatant. Um, we also have, of course, even more security incidents. Israeli security forces are deployed several areas around the West Bank. Uh, you can see, again, there are reports that a, another individual, uh, a uh, sound by name at least sounds like a Palestinian Muslim killed by settlers' bullets, right? So again, these are probably civilian security forces in these settlements. Um, you just there's just a, a real spiral of events that seem to be taking place in and around two more killed in Ramallah. Um, Israeli forces arresting five, what they're calling rioters. Again, I really am another young man injured by army bullets. <laughs> What did they do, man? Did they, did they like, did you trip over a box of rounds? Is it like somebody spilled them on the ground and he slipped? Like, I, again, the, it's, maybe it's translation errors, right? Um, but when you hide these things behind euphemisms, um, all it does is obfuscate. And again, you see, it, it, like the Russia Ukraine conflict, they do not do this. Okay. A bombing is a bombing. A missile strike's a missile strike. You, the combatants are combatants. There's so much of this conflict that's hidden behind euphemism. Um, again, some of these are civilian on civilian. Some of these are probably protesters or rioters. Um, but some of them are probably organized forms of resistance, uh, by the Hamas or affiliated organizations. Um, operating the West Bank. Uh, again, a fixing operation to prevent Israeli from security forces from redeploying from here to support Gaza. It's a, it's a, that is a military tactic. Um, but you're seeing more and more reports of this, and it's a sign you could see as well. You're seeing a, a suspected security incident, more euphemisms, near uh, an air base um, where residents were asked to lock themselves in their homes. This was accompanied, uh, of course, by alarms going off in the region. Again, you can just see that this escalation across Israel and even in the north, you can see whew, in the north border with Lebanon, uh, things are also heating up quite a bit. You can see Israeli army says that uh, nine rockets were launched at its site uh, from Lebanon by Hezbollah. So it seems like Hezbollah also escalating. Um, it's at least the volume of activity that they're launching. Um Israel responding with its own strikes inside Lebanese territory. Uh, a real sign that this looks more and more like a, uh, almost like another front in the conflict, right? The Israeli Air Force becoming involved, targeting uh, what it believed was a Hezbollah observation point, um, and that there were several more anti tank guided missile attacks. Very, very. Um, tough stuff. Uh, small arms fire again 17 hours ago. So 
really in a number of locations, this is looking less and less like a Gaza based conflict and more and more like something that is spanning from Lebanon through the West Bank into Gaza itself. Now, there's been a couple of reactions to the news that I think are really telling. The first comes to us from Israel tra- Channel 12. So, this is an Israeli news source, but it says that the war cabinet, uh, the Israeli war cabinet, made it clear to President Biden that the ground invasion in Gaza is in inevitable. Uh, now, this is the same reporting that said that the ground invasion was happening, uh, you know, within hours, and then obviously it didn't. Um, but it seems like there's some leaks and rumors that it's actually probably the U.S. Um, and Iran trying to triangulate what the red lines are and where what the parameters would be that would ensure that major powers don't see an an escalation if this ground invasion happens. I I believe, or I I hypothesize that that's the real events going on. Some kind of back channel negotiation to say, listen, what are the limits here of what you can do? What's going to trigger a, a widening of the war? And what is something where Iran, Egypt, and other Middle Eastern countries, or other predominantly Muslim countries, are going to condemn Israeli actions and make some mean tweets, but not actually do anything about it, right? That's the thread that they, the needle they have to thread. You can see here, Egypt's representative uh, to the UN, for example, uh, says, quote, Israel's bombing in the Baptist hospital, which, by the way, this was as about 12 hours ago. And so likely Egyptian intelligence almost certainly knew that this is not Israel's bombing of the Baptist hospital, was committed within the framework of a systematic plan to aim at killing and displacing Palestinian people and liquidating their cause. Maybe it translates to something different in in Arabic. I know Google's Google's pretty good about this sort of stuff, but it's just a sign that there's a tremendous gulf in this conflict between what is true and what each side wants to be true. Um, and don't get me wrong, the Israelis are also guilty of this, but today, in this day, uh, we're seeing this coming out from these Arab countries. Uh, Jordan's foreign minister saying, we will consider any attempt to displace Palestinians from the West Bank as a declaration of war. Uh, Classic Jordanian move. Uh, Of course, you almost can't fault them because a large number of Palestinian uh, groups, militant groups that were refugees in countries like Jordan um, would stage coups or assassinations or become uh, armed kind of resistance movements against the Jordanian government. And so these governments, while they support the Palestinians, they do so from a uh, safe, comfortable distance. Um, So just a reminder, again, that a lot of these Arab, these, these, uh, countries in this conflict um, and around the the region talk out of both sides of their mouths, right? They say publicly the things that they think their base wants to hear, um, but again, their actions say something very different, which is which is making us take in Palestinian refugees um, is literally so bad. It's the same thing as attacking Jordan sovereign territory. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> it just it's it's comical to me. Um, you can't help but laugh at the level of, of bananas hypocrisy. And again, today it's the Muslim countries, but trust me, I guarantee it by the end of the week, you will have every country, Israel, Hamas, Egypt, the United States. We're going to be rolling our eyes at all of them with their hypocrisy and uh, two faced nature. Sorry, I'm. I sound like I'm. I'm like bitter. This isn't actually like my shtick. Um, but if you know politicians, and I worked for you know eight years in D.C. after I got out of the military, um, you understand how politicians operate. Uh, you can decode what they do, um, and I'm trying to help do that for you guys here. Uh, they're not <laughs> democracy, autocracy, uh, oil kingdom. They all sort of behave the same. But in good news, Israel is allowing Egypt to deliver limited quantities of humanitarian aid into Gaza, including food, water, and medicine, as long as there are guarantees that it does not reach Hamas. Uh, uh, Again, they're still repeating this claim that there were hundreds of people killed in the blast. I'm... I'm, uh, Fog of war, man. Fog of war. The other noteworthy story uh, is that Biden came out and told uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that the Gaza hospital hit appears to be by the other guys, not you. He means Islamic Jihad. That's who fired the rocket. But th- that's the point. The point is, is that uh, this event, right, we're trying trying to get what seems like the truth out there. Um, 
again, this isn't to say that like there aren't going to be other instances, but you know, it's like they say the truth is the first casualty of war and we're already seeing this happen. Um, but it doesn't matter if you believe that it was an Israeli strike. It seems like the outlets and news sources like the Egyptians who want to believe it's an Israeli strike are going to continue to operate as though it was. Um, Anyway, that's all we had for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Uh, tell the algorithm that uh, some a neutral observer is more <laughs> worth having on their platform than some of the partisan stuff we've been seeing. Thanks again. See ya.